it sounded suddenly like you may be wanting to build a synthetic human being. I, uh, did you? Do you? Either of you? So, in a certain sense, my lab has been in the process of doing this, uh, synthesizing human genomes, not human beings, for a decade. Um, and the goal of the project, as was described, was to make cells just like the ones we've been talking about, just like E. coli and yeast can be used for manufacturing, uh, mammalian cells, including human cells, can be used for manufacturing um, drugs and uh, other therapeutics, antibodies and vaccines that help save people's lives. Um, those cells, just like the cells we were talking about before, can get contaminated with viruses. And in fact, this happened to one of the orphan drug manufacturing companies in Boston, Genzyme, was shut down for for two years because of a virus getting mm -hmm. uh, contamination. So, the, so that's an example of one of the reasons you might want to do the same thing we did for E. coli to make them virus resistant. We'd like to make some mammalian genome at the cellular level. That doesn't mean you should ignore all of the other uh, ramifications, but that the goal of the project was to do simple things, quote, simple things like that. <laughs> <laughs> but so I just want to make clear that the cartoon distinction, like. Were either of you thinking of trying to create a person or just a cell that encodes the human genome or something else the, other? The, the proposal on the table was to make cell lines cell that lines. would tell us, that would give, answer research problems and answer industrial problems like the one I just described. Uh, I mean, the but, issue but you go from making yeast to going to a person, why it's don't 300 you... times bigger genome than yeast. Yeah. It's not that much bigger. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh, 300 seems modest to you. Yeah. <clears throat> I well, don't know. It seems well, like. Well, considering that the cost of sequencing and synthesis has improved 3 million fold in the last few years, uh, 300 fold doesn't seem like asking a lot. To br bring the price of it down so that we can make millions of genomes of many different organisms for. Um, Hundreds of dollars. Well, just so I can understand, like, like if you just get a cell that has all of human, all of the human genome code in it, why couldn't you just do it with a mouse, or do it with a worm, or do it with something? I mean, when you go from a yeast to a person, it seems like it's a kind of like, like it seems like, come on, come on, just don't be so bold. <laughs> it seems reckless to just jump such a, like you took a pogo stick and went over everybody, like all the raccoons are wondering, what about me, the deer, you know, well, why a human? If we'd called it the Deer Genome Project, would you have been interested in it? Oh. <laughs> oh, so you wanted money, attention, talent, well, and that's I'm going sort of to give that one to George. <laughs> Quite frankly, I would, I, I, you know, I, when, when we did the human genome reading pro project, I felt that it should be dealing with any organism, all organisms uh, that we were interested in. The same thing goes for the writing. It should be something that where we reduce the cost and improve the quality of the technology, and, and people can use it for whatever they want. Practically, the mammalian genomes that you choose to do it on would might be the ones that are used industrially to produce right now to produce the therapeutics. So we don't need to, you know, the the people that are developing the technologies don't need to think that up. They can just query companies like, you know, Tom's and ask, well, what cell lines are you using? And then you say, okay, that's what we'll start with. 